side, gerrymandering is an incredibly boring topic and an incredibly boring idea. Yet, for many of us here today, it is the problem secretly foiling our attempts to create positive change in Pennsylvania. So, so let me go ahead and cite the information from our Fair District's PA website. Gerrymandering refers to a practice of dividing a geographical area into voting districts in a way that gives political advantage to a group of people. Gerrymandering can be done in a few ways, for a few reasons, but the result, and the reason that we're here today, the reason that I'm standing here on the stage, rambling on, is always the same. Gerrymandering results in an unfair political advantage for one group of people over all the others. And gerrymandering, typically in a history book, is accompanied by maybe a sentence describing it. That sentence might read, gerrymandering, a process of redrawing district lines in order to give an advantage to someone. It's not very descriptive, and I think a lot of that, that's why you don't hear a lot about this. It doesn't really explain much about gerrymandering, about the types of gerrymandering, because there's more than one, how the process came to be, and how much the process defines our political system as we know it today. And I think that last point is probably the worst part of it. So why did I get involved in fair districts? I think everyone here knows someone. If you talk to them about voting, they say, well, my vote doesn't matter. Maybe you used to be that type of person. Maybe you still are. As someone who did political organizing in the last election cycle, I heard that excuse from many people. As an organizer, I always have to remind them that your vote matters. Guys, your vote does matter. But on some level, your vote doesn't matter. I would like to tell you about my district for the U.S. House of Representatives, District 10. I am represented by Tom Marino. If you live in most parts of Lackawanna County, he is your representative, unless you live here in Scranton, in which case you're represented by Matt Cartwright. So I live in Clark Summit, 16 minutes away from this spot, and yes, I timed it this morning when I came down here. Coming to Scranton is an easy trip for me and something I do near daily. Uh, as someone who lives in Lackawanna County, I can go enjoy the spaces in Nayog Park or right here on the Courthouse Square. I frequent businesses here in downtown Scranton. My parents both work for companies who are based in Scranton. Scranton is part of my community. And yet, I don't share a representative with people who live in Scranton in the U.S. House. Do you know who I share a representative with? I share a representative Tom Marino with the fine folks of Waterloo, Pennsylvania, <laughs> three and a half hours from here in Perry County. Wow. Now I'm sure the fine folks of Waterloo are nice people, but they don't have the same needs from their representative that maybe I have from mine. Our community is divided in such a way that Scranton is carved right out of Lackawanna County and grouped in with people from Luzerne County, Monroe County, Berks County. And that doesn't make a lot of sense to me that parts of my community that are 20 minutes away from my house do not share the same representation as people three and a half hours away from me. Cracking, one of our three types, refers to dividing up voters of one group so as to dilute the impact of them. Uh, packing is the opposite. It refers to compacting voters of the same group into as few districts as possible. Sweetheart gerrymandering is our final type, and sweetheart gerrymandering is done in a way to preserve incumbents. I'm sure many of you are aware, but in this country, we have about a 90% incumbency rate. Every election, 90% of our elected officials keep their position in office. 80% of them go unchallenged in primaries. A large part of that is driven by districts being carved in such a way that the same party will win the same districts over and over again. Politicians can literally choose who their voters are. In 2000, a na man by the name of Hakeem Jeffries planned a primary challenge in his neighborhood in Brooklyn. After the 2000 elections, the Democrats in the General Assembly redrew the districts and carved his house out of his district. The district that he lived in, in de for decades, the community he lived for in decades, was taken out of his district. His neighbors were not able to vote for him anymore because they took his house out. With new technologies and voter analysis, 
becoming more readily available and easier than ever, politicians can be more brazen in their efforts to draw map, partisan maps. Now, Pennsylvania ranks fifth, depending on who you ask, in the worst states for electoral integrity. And this is all due to gerrymandering and some other issues that Peter spoke about just before now. But let's talk about number one on that list, the number one state for uh, electoral integrity, the worst electoral integrity state, North Carolina. Like Pennsylvania, about 48% of the voters identify and vote as Democrats. And like Pennsylvania, about 70% of their seats are held by Republicans. For those of us familiar with this issue, North Carolina's gerrymandering is famous for District 12. It's a district in North Carolina that runs along Interstate 40 and 85 in the middle of the state that encompasses all the major cities in North Carolina. It stretches from Raleigh and Durham across the state to the Triad area of High Point, Greensboro, Winston-Salem. The only houses in the district are the ones that contain the cities. No one lives along the interstate. Two of the three major metropolitan areas in the entire state are crammed into one district. Those voters living in that district, their votes are diluted because of that. Two of the, the General Assembly map for their state house wasn't much better. And in fact, in 2015, the federal courts threw it out because they felt that the map unfairly targeted minority communities. It's actually really interesting. Gerrymandering is already illegal under federal law under the Voting Rights Act of 1965 when gerrymandering targets communities based on race, gender, ethnicity, or religion. These protections do not expand the political party, however. Let me read you a quote from the state rep in North Carolina named David Lewis in a hearing with the courts about a new map he and his colleagues drew after it was thrown out. He made his statement to prove that the new map would not violate the rights of minorities. He said, and I quote, We want to make clear that we, to the extent, are going to use political data in drawing this map, it is to gain partisan advantage on the map. I want that criteria to be clearly stated and understood. The new map, of course, was approved. So what does this mean for us? I've explained what gerrymandering is and gave a few shady examples, but what is the point? Gerrymandering has allowed politicians to take the competitiveness out of elections. I said earlier that on some level, your vote doesn't matter. With districts strong with precision to not be competitive, it undermines our political system and more importantly, devalues our vote. As long as politicians are able to draw districts for partisan advantage, as long as politicians are able to handpick their own voters with precision, our votes will never have the full value they should have. A little bit. I'm here with Fair Districts and EPA to get your support, to get your energy into demanding that our politicians pass two bills, Senate Bill 22 and House Bill 722. These bills take the power of drawing congressional districts out of the hands of politicians and into the hands of an independent citizens commission. The independent citizens commission will be made up of Pennsylvania citizens who are not government staffers, lobbyists, or politicians, but who are citizens of the state who have a vested interest in drawing fair districts and making our votes matter as much as they should. So we have a small opportunity to fix Pennsylvania's broken system. SB 22 and HB 22 are not just bills, they are amendments to the Pennsylvania state constitution. That means, and I'm not joking about this, what I'm about to say, these two bills must be passed this year in the assembly. Then, these two bills must be passed again next year before the summer recess. Then, in 2020, we, the citizens of Pennsylvania, must vote on a statewide referendum to put this into the Constitution. We don't have a lot of time. If we fail, we will suffer for another 10 years under this unfair political system. We have a tough fight ahead of us. Right? I promise you that if we fail, the citizens of Pennsylvania will not be deciding our future. Big money interests from both national parties will. They will spend millions of dollars in our states on lobbyists to ensure that our politicians draw a map that eliminates electoral competition, keeps incumbents in office, and preserves the status quo. It won't be any of us making that decision, but we will be trapped by it. I believe in one voice, one vote, and I hope you guys do too.